he very kindly offered us uh, a tour of the grounds to tell us all about, or some of the nature, not all of it, I guess. And uh, I'm sure you'll be open to questions. Yeah, you. totally, yeah. I don't know any of you that have been to any forests in India, if you've been lucky enough, but um, in Block the Natural Forests in India, you get peacocks and the ancestor of the chicken, something called red jungle fowl. <laughs> so basically, you know, they're part of this kind of North Indian uh, dry forest ecosystem. So it really struck me like here they are in a, yeah. well, not so much a dry forest, but a damp forest. You know? yes, but it's just, yeah, really odd. And when you see the, the red jungle fowl in India, they look very, very similar to the dark chickens. Really? There's hardly any difference you know, yes. between the, the wild ancestor and the, the darker, slimmer chicken. And they're just living wild. They're living chicken. wild, yeah. Basically. And you see them in the forest, you think, oh my god, it's a chicken. And you realise it's actually a wild, a wild bird. bird. Yeah. And this is a, a woodland plant, it's called dog's mercury, and uh, it comes up in the spring like this. Perhaps later in the year, if you pick a bit off, you get this kind of white milky sap coming out of it. And that's poisonous if you get it inside you, but if you have a wart or a mole on your skin, you can put it on. If you keep on putting it on for days and days and days and days and days, it will slowly burn that wart away. And so it's very, very caustic. Uh, but if you got it inside you, it would really burn your throat and uh, cause you lots of problems. And uh, it's called dog's mercury because in the old days, anything which people thought was worthless was called dog. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just it's suitable for dogs. Not <laughs> it, really. But um, there are a few medicinal uses for it. Um, I guess it's named mercury uh, because the Romans thought the god mercury found this plant and he was really pleased with it so he gave it all these powers to heal. So I think Lent Lily is a really nice name it's kind of a shame it's not used more often. Um, I don't know what there's many kind of medicinal uses or, or um, culinary uses for daffodils. I think people used to boil the bulbs and get a kind of a glue out of it, a kind of gluey paste. I don't know quite what they did with it. But again, they are sort of pretty poisonous, and uh, you don't find many animals eating them. You know, sort of even the bulbs, uh, nothing really wants to touch them. This, I'm pretty sure, is hedgehog poo. <laughs> <laughs> can you eat that too? No, you can't eat it. No. no. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> you can, you can, but it's not advised. But, um, um, I'm just going to break it open a bit. And uh, it's kind of shiny. Um, that's because they eat lots of beetles. Um, the wing case of a beetle is um, it's very shiny and looks like metallic. Uh, this one's a little bit dull. Quite often they're kind of blue, they look metallic blue. And they're really small and they like these areas because they're looking for beetles and worms and things. So if you're out here at night, you might hear the kind of snuffling noise. And that'd be a hedgehog. Hazel. Hazel, yeah. And there's a weird one. Besides, it's a type that's infected with a virus, isn't it? Mm. So it goes all, it goes all crazy. So if you like, the, all the hazel bushes in the area are staggering their flowering. You know, so that yeah, the male flowers will come out on this, say, two weeks after the female flowers have come out on another bush. So that the female flowers will be ready for this male pollen to come over. Oh, they're, they're cunning. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really rare flower called heath cudweed, and it's, um, it's one of only like three or four sites in the whole of Hampshire where it grows. And so it's incredibly rare and really special. A tree is standing. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so if you just put grass seed down and left it for two years, you, you wouldn't get it. You know, it likes turf that's been here for like 40, 50, 60 years. But is there a way of maintaining a lawn that would encourage this? Then? Yeah, don't feed it with any fertilisers. Mm -hmm. um, don't put any weed killers on it. Mm -hmm. um, so but it might pay to actually get the sward, which is kind of the, the grassy interconnection, get that established and then stop the fertilisers and sprays. So, and then this will come in.
And if you look closely, you'll see they're covered in like long white hairs, mm -hmm. which is really oh, yeah. yeah. And some of them are really hairy, mm -hmm. and some of them less hairy. So like if you're not sure if it's a grass or it's a wood rush, you know, look for these really long white hairs on it. If you find them, it's definitely a wood rush. And there are about five similar species, but they grow in different habitats. And then you've got this thing. You think, OK, that's just a piece of dead moss. If you look closely, it's got um, very small stones in it. Tiny oh, yeah. stones. Yes. Yeah? Can you see them? Yeah. Tiny stones. It looks like it's compost, like it's tiny, tiny grass fragments mm -hmm. all tied together. And uh, if I give you a clue, it's bird poop. So <laughs> you think, you know, it's going to be a bird. So I think what birds you might have seen sat on here. And what bird might have kind of grassy bits? They're surrounded by wood pigeons and they eat grass. Because you'll see them on the lawn just pecking away. They eat stones as well? Yeah. Well, what they do, quite a few birds, to digest plant material, especially seeds, They'll swallow some stones. And basically what it does, it, it acts, because they don't have teeth, so it acts almost like teeth when they swallow it, and it moves around like that, and it crushes the material. And when the stones get really round, uh, they're not as good. So they tend to excrete them with the poop. So what's happened here, these are sort of stones that have been inside uh, a pigeon's stomach, say a couple of months, and they're no good, and they just work their way through. It's got a special kind of stomach called a gizzard. I think it's a fantastic name. And that's where all this kind of Chickens stone grinding goes on. Day. And a little bit like a cow, you know, that sends food backwards and forwards. Uh, the gizzard acts like that. It goes from one part of the stomach to the, to the gizzard and back again. What, you know, imagine an owl. It catches a mouse and it swallows it whole, swallows the whole thing. Uh, and um, what happens inside the stomach, it digests all like, the flesh and all the, the insides, but it can't digest the bone and the fur. So what happens, it builds up as a kind of ball in its, in its throat and it goes and it coughs it up because it can't actually go through its digestive system. So that isn't poop though? No, not technically poop. So this is basically... It's Sick. It's sick, yeah. Birds of prey, so that's the owls, things like kestrel, buzzards, falcons, uh, and also, interesting enough, jackdaws and crows and seagulls, they all do this. So they do the normal poop, but the hard, indigestible stuff, they all cough up, and they're called pellets. You can see it's, um, it's like fur, and you can sort of tell what species of bird has done it because some some of the birds of prey eat yeah, special only special. specialise in mammals and some yeah. specialise in birds. So if you found lots of feathers in this, it'd be one of the birds uh, birds of prey that eats birds. So this is all fur, so it tells you it's, a, it's a, one of the birds of prey that eats mammals. So possibly an owl or kestrel, most likely around here. The lower what jaw of the animal that it oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, And I saw one and it flew at 60 metres, landed on the ground, picked up a worm and then flew back. So <laughs> 60 metres it saw a worm. Mm. Wow. Uh, so we've got fantastic eyesight. Um, what they do when they're hovering, you sometimes see them hovering just like this, they're stationary. And they're, what they're looking for is small mammals like voles and mice. What they look for when they're hovering, they don't actually look for the animal, they look for the animal's pee. Because the eyesight is such that the animal's pee is like bright yellow. Wow. And it really stands out. Really? Yeah, That's so basically crazy. they're just waiting for a, a vole to pee. And some people think these hollows were made by uh, soft, uh, soft invertebrates yeah. you know, that burrowed into the seabed and some of them might be old seashells so it could be that this is kind of a burrow of some kind of soft-bodied animal and basically the the silica just filled the hole yeah so they're all weird shapes sometimes you get them totally round And uh, what's happened, this tree is kind of wounded, 
something's happened up there. It's kind of got a gash on it. Difficult to know. You can see the tree looks really unhealthy, doesn't it? So it's going to die relatively soon. And a short-lived tree, anyway. But yeah, so this is sap that's coming out. So sap is basically, if you like, it's the blood of the tree, you know. And it's edible. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can drink it. It's really nutritious. Because the sap is basically, um, you yeah, know, nutrients that the tree made last summer. And a lot of it would have gone down into the roots. And basically it's bringing it back up again. That's, the, that's a very general description of it. It's more complicated than that. So basically, it's kind of the nutrients which the tree is going to need like through the summer. Mostly water, but there's a lot of vitamin C in it. Mm. Lots of things like calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, you know. Very I want to nutritious. Tap it now. And for like country people this time of the year, you didn't have a lot of nutritious food. Mm. So tapping the birch, um, depends on how big a hole you do. If you have a biggish hole, uh, you can get like, you know, about three metres <laughs> a night of, without of sap the tree. without killing the tree, but you can only do that once in a tree's life. Yeah, if you make, yeah, only once, or oh, you really? can kill the tree if you do it more than once. Because yes. basically you're, you're causing it damage, uh, and what you do once you've got your sap, you then plug it, and it's ideally with some wood or cork. This is a hawthorn tree. And um, hawthorns are found throughout, uh, certainly Eurasia, so that's Europe and Asia. And also you get species of hawthorn in North America. So it's a really common type of tree. And you see it's bursting into leaf here now. And a couple of things. Um, this is not a native British hawthorn. You can tell that by the time of year it's bursting into leaf. The native British hawthorns, if you see them in the hedges along the lanes, they're still really wrapped up tight in the bud. So this one, either it or its parents came from southern or central Europe, <laughs> where the hawthorns burst into leaf, say three or four weeks earlier than North European hawthorns. Uh, it was cheaper for them to get hawthorn stock from southern and central Europe than it was from northern Europe. So basically they imported all this southern European hawthorn and it was planted everywhere, especially along roadsides. If you built a new road like a motorway, you would plant hawthorn. That's why if you go along motorways you see hawthorn in leaf much earlier than you do in the hedges next to the motorway. But hawthorn leaves are very nutritious, really nutritious. Really good for all heart problems and it's a big one in herbal medicine, you know. Mm. So uh, it increases the flow of blood to the heart. Um, if you've got heart disease, it does help in improving it. Obviously, if, you, if your doctor says you've got heart disease, don't just say, okay, I'm going to eat hawthorn leaves. Yeah. <laughs> not take any medicine, because you know, it might be a bit dodgy. But um, I say it's used in all sorts of stuff like that. So a really, really useful plant. Mm. You know?